This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to make sure you never miss the latest from the Disney theme parks all around the world. Here now the news for July 13th, 2023. Bob Iger, who originally returned as CEO for two years only, has extended his contract to run through December of 2026. This, of course, is not the first time Iger has been reluctant to step away from the role. Iger's CEO contract was extended multiple times until he officially announced he would retire in 2020. And, of course, in early 2020, the board of directors named chairman of Disney Parks Experiences and Products Bob Chapek as his replacement. We all know what happened after that. The contract extension indicates that a suitable replacement has not been found yet. Um, a lot of people were surprised by this. I am not a financial analyst of any kind. I am a simple theme park <laughs> reporter. Um, but it was obvious for the past couple of months, I think, that the company is weathering a storm that is, uh, you know, I, I think in a lot of ways, uh, the residual effects of Chapex, you know, regime. Um, and the things that were implemented that, that uh, you know, most of Chapex uh, stay as CEO. He was riding the wave of success that, that had, uh, of what had been set up before him, right, of, of all the things that had been put in place before he got that job. But clearly things did not go well. And by the end of Chapex time, things were bad. And now, um, you know, it's not going to be an overnight thing to fix it. And also clearly no one else within the company is ready to be CEO. So I think this makes sense. Um, I think they're going to get Josh tomorrow ready. I really think that's what this is about. I think uh, I'm sure the board um, would only approve this if they felt this was the right course of action. And if they know like, OK, we have a suitable person in house. They just need some time to diversify their portfolio a little bit. And I'm sure Josh tomorrow will get sent off to another division of the company before he becomes CEO. But that's that's my theory. Let me know in the comments who you think the next CEO is going to be. But I think that's where we are at this point, that we're going to weather. Iger's going to weather the storm a little bit longer until things are stable. Following the announcement of his contract extension, Bob Iger uh, sat down with CNBC to discuss his decision and the future of the company. He was prompted about the ongoing feud with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, including the presidential candidate's suggestion that Disney is sexualizing its content and becoming too woke. Iger mentioned that the company was not concerned about complications in Florida for the long term and in general was focused on Disney's plan and mostly optimistic uh, hopes beyond short term complications. Regarding ongoing legal battles with DeSantis, he once again defended the company's First Amendment right to free speech, while also admitting the situation may not have been handled as well as it could have been at the time. Iger was also adamant that the Walt Disney Company has no interest in participating in a culture war with anyone. Regarding sexualizing children's content, he responded bluntly, quote, the notion that Disney is in any way sexualizing children is quite frankly preposterous. Bookings for Disney's not-so-spooky spectacular dessert party will open on July 18th of this year. There are two dessert parties which take place during Mickey's not-so-scary Halloween party. And at both, guests can partake in a dessert buffet at the Tomorrowland Terrace restaurant before enjoying reserved viewing for the not-so-spooky spectacular fireworks show. Halloween-themed treats will include delicious desserts prepared by a pastry chef, such as chocolate-dipped strawberries and devil's chocolate mousse, a variety of cheeses, refreshing beverages, including an assortment of beer and wine for guests ages 21 and over, with a valid form of identification. The not-so-spooky spectacular dessert party at the Tomorrowland Terrace will allow guests to stay in a reserved area of the terrace during the fireworks so they can enjoy the show while seated. The dessert party is $114, including tax and gratuity for guests ages 10 and up. It's $69, including tax and gratuity for guests ages 3 to 9. Guests younger than 3 are free, as usual, and check-in begins one hour before the fireworks. There's also then the Disney's Not-So-Spooky Spectacular Dessert Party with Plaza Garden viewing. And with this party, guests move to the Plaza Garden in the Magic Kingdom Hub for the fireworks viewing. The price of this is $99, including tax and gratuity for guests ages 10 and up, and $59 for ages 3 to 9. Check-in begins one and a half hours before fireworks for that one. As usual, I will tell you, I only, if you're going to bother doing this, I don't really recommend spending the money on this to begin with. If you're going to do it, though, I recommend the first one that has the seating at the terrace. The one with the Plaza Gardens view, it feels rushed. The view's not great. I, I would not do it under any circumstance. 
Sources have indicated to WWNT that the August closure of the Haunted Mansion at the Magic Kingdom is the beginning of the installation of the Hatbox Ghost. However, it will not be completed during that time and will not be ready for the start of the Halloween season at Walt Disney World. Imagineers and crew are building the new audio animatronic, which is expected to be found in the attic after the bride, like the version at Disneyland. The addition of the Hatbox Ghost was announced during the D23 Expo in September of 2022. It was speculated that Disney would have him ready for either the premiere of the new movie or the start of the Halloween parties, but it will be neither. Um, I know very shortly after we put out the initial report, um, there are some... I don't know the nicest way to put this. There are some outlets or, or um, internet personalities or influencers um, that Disney uses essentially as a way to put out information they want to get to people. And um, they were adamant that the Hatbox Ghost will not be debuting, but that's not the whole story. This is the beginning of work on that figure. Um, that being said, those building the figure, those who are around the project, have no idea when this thing is going to be delivered or when it's going to debut. That's not set as of yet. But watch where you get that news from, because sometimes it's basically like you're getting it from Disney, because that's who's feeding these particular sources. As usual, we here at WWNT will strive to bring you the, uh, the real story as we can. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, Be Our Guest Vacations. Your dream vacation begins with Be Our Guest and their concierge team of expert vacation planners. Head on over to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WDWNT, and the team will design your next magical vacation from the Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resort to the Disney Cruise Line to Adventures by Disney and more. They're also able to book unforgettable VIP tours where you and your group can experience the ultimate park day. The best part is their concierge services are 100% free. So book today. Wednesday was a nutty day at the Magic Kingdom as a squirrel snuck itself into Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress and crashed the 1940s scene. The squirrel got on stage and seemed to be enjoying the show, watching Sarah work on her a rumpus a room uh, as that scene lit up. Uh, but when John said it was time to move on, the squirrel even ran across the stage towards the next scene, moving forward in time before jumping off and out of sight. Of course, it's not uncommon for guests to see small animals like squirrels running around at the Walt Disney World theme parks, especially near dining locations, and sometimes birds even fly into buildings and such. But a squirrel on stage at Carousel Progress is a rarer sight, and maybe even rarer than seeing a guest on stage at Carousel Progress, which we have seen before. Disney has revealed this year's finisher medals that will be uh, awaiting runners at the 2023 Wine and Dine Half Marathon Weekend. Here's a look. First, we have the Wine and Dine 5K, which is Alice in Wonderland themed. There's the Wine and Dine 10K, which is themed to Beauty and the Beast. The Wine and Dine Half Marathon is in Kanto. And of course, the whole reason I'm doing this thing, the Disney Two Course Challenge has a medal, the first ever medal featuring Figment. It's also, I believe, the first race medal ever that will light up. It has a light up feature. The 2023 Disney Wine and Dine Half Marathon Weekend will take place November 2nd through the 5th, 2023. That's very soon. I should probably get to training. I probably better get on that real quick. Disney Character Clicks, a photo pass experience sponsored by AT&T 5G, has debuted at Disney's All-Star Movies Resort. This new machine will be available at the resort lobby for a limited time. Guests can tap their Magic Band, Key to the World card, Park Ticket, or mobile, Magic Mobile Pass to activate the Disney Character Click screen. They're then able to choose from Mickey, Minnie, Daisy, and Pluto to be in their photos, and guests can choose multiple characters and they can appear in their Disney 100 outfits. There are a few moments to strike a pose on the uh, designated standing spot, and the characters appear to enter the photo as shown on the screen. These photos are snapped and automatically, or automatically if you prefer, linked to your My Disney Experience account. Walt Disney World has welcomed a new Shetland pony to Tricircle D Ranch, who was just born this week. Dr. Mark Penning, the vice president of Disney's Animal Science and Environment Division, announced the birth on Instagram and as well on Twitter. This sweet Shetland pony, seen on the left in the photo you're looking at now, and mom lady on the right, is a girl, but has yet to have her name revealed. She was born with a white coat, which means she will one day help pull Cinderella's coach. But for now, she is happily bonding with her mom in the ranch's pasture. This is the latest birth for Tricircle D Ranch, which just welcomed two new foals uh, back in May of this year. Disneyland Resort will celebrate its 68th anniversary on Monday, July 17th with a special cavalcade. The celebratory cavalcade will be performed at 11.45 a.m. on Monday, July 17th at Disneyland Park. And while the 68th isn't a big anniversary like the 70th will be, Disneyland has celebrated past anniversaries with similar cavalcades. We, of course, will be there to cover this cavalcade for you if you can't make it. 
Guests experiencing Adventure by Disney's uh, nearly $115,000 private jet tour to the Disney parks around the world were the first to hear new details about the upcoming Swiss Family Robinson-inspired retheme of the Adventureland Treehouse at Disneyland. Imagineer Kim Irvine met with the guests of the Disney theme parks around the world, a private jet adventure at the Golden Horseshoe to talk about her history with the company, as well as some exclusive details about the transformation of the Adventureland Treehouse, according to this new video from Laughing Place. The treehouse, formerly known as Tarzan's Treehouse, and prior to that, the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse, will now be occupied by a new family of five, with each member having their own unique gift to make life in the jungle fun and exciting. While none of the names were shared just yet, we did learn a little bit more about each member of the family. The father is the chief of the family and has created a kitchen where the meals his family enjoys can cook themselves on the stove. He's also managed to build an ice box in the jungle, which is a feat in, of, in and of itself. All of this is possible thanks to the water wheel that brings the magical water out of the creek below and into the tree, meaning the water wheel will be returning. You can see it in our construction update, the, most latest, uh, the latest one, I should say. The mother, meanwhile, is a fabulous musician, and her room will see the return of the player organ from the Swiss Family Treehouse, and as well, it will play the Swiss Capulca, which is all I cared about. I'm on board with this project now. Um, you could see that in the previously released concept art for her room. The children of the new family are a teenage daughter and two twin boys. The daughter is a gifted astronomer and astrologer who studied the moon and stars out of the window of the treehouse and in the treehouse's loft. Her room will feature graphs and models of the universe that she has put together during her studies. The twin boys are naturalists, with one loving plants and the other loving animals. Their room will be filled with monkeys, toucans, and other kinds of plants, both man-eating and otherwise. The transformation of the Adventureland Treehouse is still set to be completed sometime this year, but an opening time frame has yet to be announced. This sounds like classic Disney storytelling. Um, this family ticks a lot of boxes. These sounds like it sounds like these will be fun, sort of maybe interactive-ish rooms. Um, or at the very least, we'll have some fun uh, little effects and things going on in them. Um, it sounds really fun. I cannot wait to see this. It's, it's just classic. I can't remember the last time we got an original attraction. So this is wildly exciting. In the latest viral video of guests making poor choices at Disney parks, a guest holding a baby waded through the waters of Pirates of the Caribbean at Disneyland instead of waiting for cast members to evacuate them. TikTok user Curly Liz shared a video of the guest wading through the water of the fort scene uh, set to a My Heart Will Go On instrumental arrangement. It's clear the Pirates of the Caribbean ride had malfunctioned and stopped, meaning cast members were preparing to evacuate guests, including one cast member in waders next to the first boat in the video. Guests are required, of course, to remain in the vehicles during attraction problems while they await cast members who are trained to properly uh, evacuate them from the ride safely. In addition to a legitimate safety concern, such as being uh, directly in the middle of a show with electrical components and other unseen dangers like mechanics, you know, an improper evacuation could also damage the ride infrastructure and scenery. And in the video, the guest approaches a second boat, talking to another guest holding a baby. And the second baby holding guest then seems to exit the boat, following the first guest and leaving view. Another guest starts climbing over the seat uh, backs to follow them as well. Uh, don't do this. Under any, like, I understand these people were stuck for an hour. I get that that's rough. I understand. But um, given the history of rides when people have jumped out of them. I mean, let's let's go back in time to the 90s when someone jumped out of Splash Mountain and, and unfortunately died. Uh, let's jump back to when the person stuck their hand out of the boat on Pirates of the Caribbean in Florida and lost their finger. And even Disney couldn't figure out how they did this, to the point at which they sent cast members with hot dogs on sticks from Casey's uh, onto the ride to hold them over the side of the boat to try to see where a guest could have even done that. I don't think they ever figured it out, by the way. Um, this is why keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside at all times. Um, so don't, don't, especially if you have a small child, don't, don't do that. That's, it's very dangerous. After Oogie Boogie Bash tickets sold out, resellers are now trying to offer the tickets for up to $2,000 on eBay and other online sites like StubHub. We saw eBay listings for Oogie Boogie Bash tickets ranging from $230.50 at 11 bids to $1,999.99. Most have free shipping or free local pickup. What a deal. But some are charging for shipping despite the fact that tickets are digital. 
TikTok user the Disney RN even spotted a listing priced at $3,199.99, but that one has since been deleted or the price was lowered. Oogie Boogie Bash tickets originally ranged from $134 to $189, depending on the date. And Oogie Boogie ticket sales resumed at 9 a.m. on Tuesday after technical difficulties, but sold out in short order. You can support the entire team buying this show and others by joining the WDWNT Inner Globe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. And it costs less than any of those Oogie Boogie Bash tickets. In fact, get access to exclusive content, discounted show and event tickets, and more. And a special shout out to all of our Wigs members watching who make the show happen every week. Disney Cruise Line has raised prices at nearly all of their adult-only eateries across their ships. Brunch or dinner at Palo on the Disney Magic, the Disney Wonder, the Disney Dream, and the Disney Fantasy, as well as Palo Steakhouse on the Wish, has been raised from $45 per person to $50 per person. On the Disney Dream and the Disney Fantasy, Remy is now up uh, to $80 from $75. Uh, it's $135 per person. Uh, that's for brunch. It's $135 per person for dinner, up from $125. And the dessert course is $65 rather than $60. Meanwhile, brunch at Enchante on the Disney Wish has been raised by $5 from $75 to $80. And dessert at Enchante is up from $60 to $65 as well. And the Passion and and collection dinner options are now 135 and 205 respectively, raised from 125 and 195. A spokesperson said Disney Cruise Line raised prices as we continue to make enhancements to the overall dining experience and menu selections. The hike in price went into effect this past Tuesday, July 11th. And while regular dining is included in the Disney Cruise Line pricing, these adult-only venues are add-on dining experience, uh, experiences. And guests who have reached the new Pearl tier, though, do get a complimentary meal at Palo. That is after 25 cruises, though. I want to comment. They're saying they raised it because they're enhancing menus. These menus haven't changed. And they haven't changed in a while, honestly. So, I mean, just admit, like, if someone's reaching you for a comment, Disney PR, just say, like, you know, do, just say, say inflation and higher costs, we have to do this. That's all. For $5, no one's even going to bat an eye. If people are going to do this, the $5, or, the, or in some cases, a couple more dollars, not going to scare them away. I never understand why they just aren't more honest with uh, all of us, but whatever. A new ship's log page from Disney, tracking the progress on the Disney Treasure ship, has launched. This is the next uh, upcoming vessel in the Disney Cruise Line uh, arsenal. Uh, the page already features a timeline of construction milestones from January to June of this year. Uh, the most recent update on June 26th of 2023. I'll now read you the most recent installment from June 26th. Uh, with today's installment of the bridge block, the Disney treasure now has everything it needs to sail through the waterways around the world. The bridge block contains important navigational equipment for the ship, including the wheel. The future captain and their crew will be able to control the ship's direction and speed from an onboard command center that looks out towards the horizon with floor-to-ceiling windows. This exciting update means we are one step closer to the day when the Disney treasure will transport guests to beautiful destinations and explore the globe. The Disney treasure is set to launch next year. And of course, for the latest from Disney Cruise Line, be sure to check out our new website, dclnewstoday.com. Please go check it out for daily Disney Cruise Line news. And we have some exciting cruises coming up. There'll be some great coverage, some vlogs. Um, we're doing an Alaska cruise at the beginning of August. And as well, we're going to do a one of the Baja cruises out of San Diego in November. And um, we will be doing more of these to bring you coverage of all the different itineraries aboard the Disney Cruise Line. Disneyland Paris has announced the new annual pass program. It's called Disneyland Pass, and it'll launch on July 19th. The program includes three pass tiers. There's bronze, silver, and gold. Existing annual pass holders can hold on to their tickets, including any benefits and discounts, until they expire. If they're in the renewal period, they can renew to Disneyland Pass starting on July 19th. Existing pass holders can upgrade to Disneyland Pass in person at the Walt Disney Studios Park ticket booths. The cost of the remaining days of their current pass will be deducted from the cost of the new one. Disneyland Pass will be available to guests who are currently not annual pass holders later in the summer. The number of passes available will be limited. The benefits no longer available with Disneyland Pass include fr uh, free stroller and wheelchair rentals, privilege tickets, hotel discounts, and day ticket discounts. The annual pass holder entrance, infinity parking, and free locker storage will no longer be available to any pass holders as of July 19th. As well, reserved viewing areas will no longer be available for parades and nighttime shows as of August 1st. New benefits include guaranteed access to four seasonal annual pass parties a year for the pass holder and one guest. The first of these will be on September 29th. 
Disneyland pass holders uh, will also have access to an exclusive meet and greet space several times a year for three to four weeks at a time. Pass holders will be able to reserve one meeting for each of these periods. This same space will be used for pop-up sales and events as well. All three tiers will still get three park reservations at a time, but there is no longer a distinction in availability for day tickets and pass holders. Disneyland pass holders will have full access to reservations. Parking is free with all tiers. The bronze Disneyland pass will be 289 euros with access to the parks 170 days per year. Other than free parking, there are no extra benefits to bronze. The Silver Disneyland Pass will be 499 euro with 300 days of access. It'll include a 10% discount at Disneyland Paris shops, Disneyland Paris restaurants, and annual Disney uh, photo pass. Gold is 699 euros for 365 days of access. That's the most expensive an AP has ever been in Paris. It'll include a 15% discount at Disneyland Paris shops and restaurants. Disney photo pass is included. There will also be extra magic time for gold pass holders only. This is what we expected, right? This is um, higher prices, less benefits. The moment, like the moment Disneyland Paris was profitable, Disney took the opportunity to, to ream guests, right? And we're not, I'm not surprised. This is literally why um, we had to go in person, renew our annual passes uh, back in May or June. I forget when we went. We went at some point. Uh, it might have been May. Um, we went and it was May. And the reason we did that is because we knew like either they're going to stall this for so long that we won't have passes for a while or it's not going to be beneficial to have the new ones. So I'm glad we did. Um, let us know in the comments if uh, you're a Disneyland Paris regular, if you're a pass holder especially, what you think. I'm sure you're not happy. I'm not either. They've taken quite a bit away. And uh, I get it. You're successful now. But, um, you know, I guess it is what it is. The Disney Parks Instagram page recently shared a video of some of the work being done on Casa de Coco, a Restaurante de Familia, a new restaurant at Disneyland Paris inspired by the Pixar film Coco. In the video, Imagineers show some of the props they're working on for Casa de Coco. Behind them, we also see murals like in the restaurant, one for the Rivera family Zapateros. In the family room, there will be details re related to the Rivera family, including these boxes featuring the names of their business. There will also be a music room featuring colorful guitars, and of course, Imagineers are recreating Miguel's white guitar. Casa de Coco was first announced during a D23 gala in April as a retheme of Fuente del Oro restaurant in Frontierland. The reimagining is well underway, but an opening date has not yet been announced. The spooky season is on the horizon at Tokyo Disney Resort, and the Oriental Land Company has announced their plans for Disney Halloween 2023, which will take place at Disneyland and Disney Sea from September 15th to October 31st. Disney Halloween 2023 will see the return of the Spooky Boo Parade, where ghosts invite Mickey Mouse and his Disney friends and guests into their world. New for this year, however, will be the ability for guests to purchase Disney Premier Access for the parade, where they can view it from a designated viewing area. This year will also mark the return of the parade's dancers, as well as two show stops along the parade route. So the full parade is back, it sounds like. Meanwhile, the Haunted Mansion Holiday Nightmare will return and will welcome guests starting September 14th through January 8th. At Tokyo Disney Sea, guests can enjoy a Halloween greeting featuring Mickey Mouse and friends dressed in their pumpkin and candy costumes at, Medi at Mediterranean Harbor. The greeting will last for about 15 minutes and happen twice a day. And other than this, the Tokyo Disney Resort website has a coming soon display for entertainment, so it's possible more will be added. At Tokyo Disney Sea, if you see a cast member wearing a special costume for the event, all you have to do is say trick or treat and you'll get some candy. This year, guests will also be able to dress up once again like their favorite Disney characters and enjoy the Halloween festivities. Guests will be able to enter both parks in full Disney costume every day during the Disney Halloween event. You can read the full costume guidelines on their website, and I will tell you, I have been during Halloween to just about every Disney resort in the world. No one does Halloween costumes like the Japanese guests. The attention to detail, the quality of the costumes, insane. They're, it's an attraction, and the guests are an attraction in themselves. It's unbelievable. There also will be new merchandise collections during the Halloween event. You can learn more about them on our website. We have them all listed. But I will tell you, number one, because it is the 40th anniversary, they've done a line of sort of throwback uh, Mickey plush and other items where they're in uh, Mickey's in costumes from previous Halloweens and also um, some of the most beloved entertainment of all time. There is a mysterious masquerade Mickey plush, which I must have for those that don't know. Uh, one of the most beloved shows that's ever been done in a Disney park. Go watch Mysterious Masquerade at Tokyo Disney Sea on YouTube if you've never seen it. It is, uh, I can't believe it existed. It's unreal. 
Also, special Halloween-themed food and beverage options will be available at both Disneyland and Disney Sea, And there will also be spooky treats available in select locations at both parks. You can check out the menus. Eventually, we will have those updated on our site once they release them. And the Disney hotels will be offering a special Halloween menu as well. And last but not least, Halloween decorations will be set up throughout both Disneyland and Disney Sea. At Disneyland, the park entrance will have banners and garlands for Halloween, and a giant Mickey pumpkin will be on display in the middle of World Bazaar. There will also be a Halloween display behind Cinderella Castle that includes many jack-o'-lanterns and a ghostly band. Over at Disney Sea, the park will be lively during the day and mysterious at night. The American Waterfront will be the main attraction for Halloween fun, but other Halloween-themed decorations will be present throughout. Three special tickets will also be available for the Disney Resort Line monorail, uh, with each one being themed to the merchandise collections on sale during the event. There will also be souvenir medals with Disney Halloween designs for sale. For the absolute latest on these stories and all that didn't make it into today's show, be sure to check WDWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today and have a great big beautiful tomorrow. Welcome to News Today with Universal Parks News Today. I'm Tom Corliss. Here now the news 